Quick disclaimer, I am a community moderator for First Contact Entertainment, so feel free to take the following with a pinch of salt. With that out of the way, let me begin. Firewall Ultra released on the PSVR 2 over one month ago. Sequel to the beloved PSVR 1 shooter Firewall Zero Hour, and despite never getting any marketing outside of the PlayStation blog, Ultra was greatly anticipated by many in the PSVR community, including myself. People couldn't wait to see returning and new maps in crisp 4K with HDR visuals. We were looking forward to seeing how eye tracking would enhance the game. We were excited for a smoother experience thanks to dedicated servers and we couldn't wait for the guns to feel more real than ever thanks to the advanced haptics and adaptive triggers of the Sense controllers. Firewall Ultra was going to be a real showcase of what the PSVR could do. Then Firewall Ultra launched and the troubles began. The number of issues discovered on day one were staggering. Squad matchmaking simply didn't work for full squads or squads would get split up onto enemy teams. Traps like C4 and mines couldn't be disabled, making them completely overpowered. Progression was incredibly grindy. Crashes were fairly common. There was even rank resets occurring, weapons disappearing, enemies glowing in the dark on certain maps, ammo counters displaying incorrect information, hands getting stuck on weapons or stuck holding grenades. There was also a plethora of visual bugs like guns pointing one way and shooting another, players arms twisting and looking disfigured or the scoreboard floating 50 feet above your head at the end of the round making it impossible to actually look at. That's just some of the unintended bugs we had. The other problems with Firewall were the deliberate design decisions that have not been received well by many starting with the new ADS mechanic. So this new aim down sight mechanic allows the gun to instantly snap to wherever your eyes are looking, whilst reducing the recoil significantly, making it feel almost as if you have an aim boss cheese. Now this can be ignored, you do not have to use it, but if you aim and shoot manually, you'll not only have the increased recoil to deal with, you'll also have to contend with the fact that other players will be using it, putting you at a massive disadvantage. It's worth mentioning there are some out there who enjoy this mechanic, but in my own experience, as well as from many in the community, there's a sense that it takes the skill out of aiming and choosing the very core of a first person game like Firewall. And speaking of eye tracking, another common complaint is just how prevalent eye tracking is in many aspects of the game. From aiming your grenades to selecting your weapons, eye tracking is all over this game. Now this may have been a good idea in theory, but in practice, in the heat of a battle, needing to take your eyes off the action to equip a weapon or aim a grenade can be incredibly frustrating and imprecise at times. Aside from eye tracking, we also had the Raha issue to deal with. Now Raha is one of the contractors in the game and every contractor has their own unique skill, but her skill was completely overpowered. It allowed her to see enemies through walls at any range if they shot their guns or made too much noise. So if the ADS mechanic made you feel like you had an aim boss, Raha made you feel like you had wall hacks too. To make Mazars worse, Raha could be bought with real money instead of grinding, making Manny feel like she was paid to win. So this all sounds fairly bad, and it is, but what about the good? You can't go from Firewall Zero Hour, one of the best PSVR 1 games, to Ultra without there being some good. Well, Firewall Ultra is one of the nicest looking PSVR 2 games out there. You can feel that it is high production value when you put the headset on. From the detailed environments with impressive touches like steam flowing out of grates, flies buzzing around dumpsters or motes of dust just hanging in the air, to the impressively detailed weapon models and beautiful lighting and shadows, Ultra is no slouch in the visual department. Not to mention the core of Firewall, which is the Contracts mode, is still as addictive as ever. And the maps, seven of the eight returning from Firewall Zero Hour, are some of the best maps you'll find in a first person shooter. There is an amazing game here being suffocated by all these other issues. So let's fast forward to today, after multiple patches, what has changed? 
It's undeniable that First Contact had made some strides toward making Firewall Ultra the game we hoped it would be, although some of these updates have been frustrating either by not fixing what it says they would fix in the patch notes or affecting something else negatively. Still, squad matchmaking was fixed after two weeks, although the co-op mode Xville still has issues with matchmaking with more than three players in a squad. The traps are no longer indestructible, Raha has been nerfed to the point where she is kind of useless now. You are rewarded with more XP and in-game currency and the assignments, which are challenges that let you earn bonus XP in crypto, have finally unlocked, although the challenges themselves came with their own set of issues which had to be patched out also. But even so, it still isn't enough. Not in the PvP mode at least, the grind is still too painful right now. Those who had their ranks reset had them restored, although there are reports still of rank resets still occurring. During one of my streams of Firewall Ultra on this channel, First Contact Entertainment CEO Hess Barber himself joined the chat and spoke fairly candidly. His comments suggested that a lot of options are being worked on right now that should help with some of those other issues, hinting that the eye tracking dependency may be lessened and things like weapon selection may be replaced with more traditional methods. Encouraging to hear, but we still don't have an ETA on these changes. Today, Firewall Ultra is in a somewhat precarious position. Like I said, there's a great game here that you could pour hundreds of hours into, but there are many roadblocks in the way of that. There's a negative sentiment surrounding Firewall held by many in the PS Viewer community, and it's a little bit worrying for the health of the game. I often find myself being matched against the same names again and again in Ultra, suggesting that maybe a lot of people have dropped off. Those who have followed Firewall since Zero Hour may remember that Zero Hour had a similar rough period. It was broken for about a month and it did survive that. However, the difference here is that Zero Hour broke around nine months after it launched. There was already an established player base there who were already hooked on the gameplay loop of Firewall Zero Hour. With Ultra coming out the gates in a really rough state, it may have prevented the establishment of that foundational player base who are ready to come back when things are on track. The next few months for Ultra are going to be crucial. I hope that when I make my next look back video on Firewall Ultra, maybe Firewall Ultra six months later or something like that, that I can talk about the amazing comeback First Contact Entertainment made and all the improvements that came in and we can all have a laugh about how the first month was very, very rough, you know, but it's all in the past. Maybe doing a soft relaunch or something like that when all the fixes are implemented to re-attract the audience lost from these early days will be a good idea as well, I don't know. First Contact Entertainment have what it takes to turn this around but I really hope it's sooner rather than later. There's definitely other sharks in these waters now and there's more to come. That is it for this video lads and ladies. Thank you for watching and thank you to Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. You can check him out in the link in the description for more. Also let me thank my channel members for their continued support. They are the following. Muzz, Deadeye Dan, Chopped PPE, no one knows. Movemaster make esports commentator for hire. Deej the Pumpkin Patch Kid. Pete Hawkins. Crumb. Superfly AF. Moonshot. Armstrong Million. Blister. AC6 the Mad Hatter. Pat Leading Fox Jr. Horatio Ward. Durbin Brown. Prophecy 777. Jason Ewan. Roy Schwartz. Mikey Moy. Danishin Act. Virtual Dan. Soxfan96. Wasman Days, Nate Diaz, Gino DeMarco, Piotr Gef, We Have Always Lived in the Castle Merry Cast, Tree Smoker, Shadow XJ, Diego Darko Vior, Shapeshifter, The Amorphous Gamecast, Vodka 101, Jack Naumo, Freps Nominal, Skeletor, Rudy Tay, Mr. Tortoise the Game Turtle, Infinity Lefty, Edify Till I Die, Mr. 777, and Lone Wolf Vior. Thank all of you very much for your support. If you'd like to have your name added to that list, then you can support me by hitting that join button below for additional perks also. That is it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, please stay nice and ultra moist.